Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist. Hey, may you live in interesting times. We're going to talk today about the attack on Israel and its place in Bible prophecy. Let's pray first. Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for salvation by grace through faith. We thank you for the pure living word of God. Hallelujah. That we may know all things. Open our eyes now to Bible prophecy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, when 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 we come to anything that has to do with the nation of Israel, we are talking about the subject of prophecy. Because that is the subject of prophecy, is the Drew, is the Jews and Israel. That's what the entire Old Testament is about. That's what pro the prophets are about. Uh, it's not about the church. The church was a mystery hid, kept hid, secret from ages and generations, but was revealed to us after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, after Israel's rejection of Messiah, then the mystery of the church, uh, the, the body of Christ, was revealed through the Apostle Paul, and we get all the revelation about the church, the body of Christ, uh, as New Testament revelation through the Apostle Paul. But Israel is the subject of prophecy. So anytime we're talking anything about Israel, we in prophecy, we on prophecy ground. This is prophecy stuff. And uh, something real interesting, uh, like you look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, you know, and People get Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 21, and Mark 14 mixed up with the rapture. And it, th those, those chapters were way before there ever was a church. The subject was the elect, Israel my elect. The subject was Christ coming back and setting up his kingdom on earth, the Jewish kingdom prophesied in the Old Testament. So this was a this was a gathering of Israel back to Jerusalem. It was not a catching away of the body of Christ in, in, into the clouds and, and into heaven to be with the Lord. Nothing similar even. So people get people get the, uh, these uh, chapters right here mixed up with the rapture. The rapture was a revelation having to do with the mystery that was revealed later on by the Apostle Paul. Uh, the, the rapture of the church and the regathering of Israel as taught by the Lord in Matthew chapter 24, Luke 21, and Mark 14, two completely different events. So when we're talking about uh, things pertaining to the nation of Israel in Matthew chapter 24, he gets done, he talks about all that, and he says... Uh, um, he, uh, he says, uh, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and, and shall all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. And they're being gathered because Christ has just come back and his feet have landed on the Mount of Olives. He's taking his seat in the throne of David in Jerusalem, and he's gathering Israel to him. And that's a fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 37, if you want to read a little bit more about that. But what's interesting, it, there's the timing on, on this. And uh, uh, he says in verse 32, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Um, throughout Scripture, Israel has been called God's fig tree. And it, you'd see that uh, in in type and representation and figure when uh, Christ is going into the city and he sees the fig tree and he came to it and there was no fruit and he and he cursed the fig tree and it withered and died and that's what that's what happened he came to his own and his own received him not and uh, and when when they Israel rejected Christ then in 70 AD Titus of Rome marched his legions down there smashed out Israel Israel was not a nation again for almost 2,000 years. But he said, you know, there would come a time right before the end where what would happen? Where where the, the fig tree would begin to bloom again. Amen. And uh, 
and that we saw that in, in, in this greatest miracle. Nothing has ever happened like it in, in all of human history, where a nation that had been gone for 2,000 years comes back to life miraculously with its, with its language, with its culture, with its religion, and everything. And but God said that over and over again in the Old Testament, that right before he comes, he would gather his people again back into the land. And that was in 1948. Israel was declared a nation, but actually never recaptured Jerusalem where there's really no Israel without Jerusalem until 1967. So we see in 1967, we had the, the Israel back in the land, declared a nation and, and in control of Jerusalem once again. So this is all prophetic stuff, prophetic stuff. So he said that this, that, that the generation, that generation sh says, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So that's the generation that sees Israel back in the land. So however many years you want to call a generation, there's about three different definitions of a generation number wise, depending on the context in the word of God. But however many years you want to call a generation, you can call you can start counting from 1967. Amen. For sure. So this is prophecy. This is concerning Israel. Now, um, we know that some bad things are fixing to happen to the nation of Israel. We know that, uh, uh, if you will, you go to Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38. Now, <clears throat> there's, real, there's, really, there's really two big battles in this chapter. And uh, um, it goes into uh, it th into chapter 39 too. And you see there's really two separate battles here. And it has been postulated that one battle is Armageddon and that the other battle is the Gog and Magog war uh, uh, which is very short and is at the end of the millennium. Um, we can be sure, though, that the first battle is not the Gog and Magog war at the end of the millennium because it says there's seven years in burying the bodies and, and, and burning the weapons of war and such. So we know that uh, uh, at, at the Gog and Magog war at the end of the millennium, the next thing is a great white throne of judgment and a new heavens and new earth. So there's no time or place for burying, burning weapons and burying bodies and stuff like that. So this first one is either, it's either Armageddon or it's something coming up to and close to Armageddon. Amen. And so he, that's, that's when he goes on and he, and he starts that off in, in, in chapter 38. It says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, all right? That's Russia. Uh, not going to take all the time to, 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 to prove that to you, but you can research that yourself. That's Russia. And prophecy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back, and I will put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And he's got some folks with him. Check it out. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Torgama of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Okay, so this is, this is all who's coming against Israel. And so we see it's Russia. And then you get in here, Persia. Persia is Iran. Per Persia is just the old name for Iran. All right. And then you've got Ethiopia and Lib Libya with them and all of them. So what you have there, you have the Isla North African Islamic Confederation. So you have the, you have the Islamic nations with, uh, with Iran and the North African Islamic nations. And then six here, Gomer, that's, that's actually Germany. And then the house of Torgama 
and that's Turkey. All right. So what you've got here, you've got uh, um, you've got Russia and Germany kind of teamed up with this Islamic coalition. All these Islamic nations, Ethiopia, Libya, Iran, uh, there, and and they're all coming against the nation of Israel. And uh, uh, so a lot of that, right now you look and you see that Russia and Iran, they like that. They got all kinds of treaties and they're hooked up and, 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 and they're, 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 they're buddies. They, 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 they in this thing together already. And you know who else is with them? Torgama, Turkey. President Erdogan, they were just showing pictures of, of the president of Turkey and Putin and, and, and the president of Iran all together, just smiling, shaking hands, got just cut our new deal. And it's just so, so crazy that that's exactly that's exactly what the word of God said. The prophet Ezekiel in 587 B.C. told us what was going to happen right there at the end. So we know that's happening. And that's these Islamic nations. Look, this, these Islamic nations are wicked they are evil it's an islam is an evil satanic religion it's a bloody murderous tool of the devil um and, and i'll show you here real just real quick uh, i went and got a uh this uh, uh the quran with a parallel arabic text and I, I i really like this one because it's one of the earliest English translations directly from the Arabic text that hasn't been watered down. You get some of the more recent uh, uh, English translations of the Quran, and they just just like just like with the Bible, <laughs> they 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 watered it down and watered it down and, and 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 changed the language so it wouldn't be offensive to anybody. But this is this is one of the older. Uh, uh, if not the oldest English translation that I have right here, and let me just let me just read you a, a, a few quotes about this great religion of peace that they uh, call Islam. All right, I'm going to go to uh, Surah two, one ninety one. You want to look them up? Surahs are what they call like their chapters. So you got Surah two, one ninety one. All right, and uh, here's here's your wisdom, here, here's your great religion of peace. Slay them wherever you find them. Drive them out of the places from which they drove you. Idolatry is more grievous than bloodshed. <laughs> All right. All right. Slay them wherever you find them. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> okay. Then how about uh, 533? Surah 533. I'm not, hey, I'm not as, I'm not as quick finding verses, praise God, in the Quran as I am in the Bible. <laughs> Surah 533. Those that make war against God and his apostle and spread disorder in the land shall be put to death or crucified or have their hands and feet cut off on alternate sides, or be banished from the country. <laughs> they shall be held up to shame in this world and sternly punished in the hereafter. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Religion of peace. Great religion of peace. All right. How about uh, 860? Surah 860. I'm going to take you all over here. I'm going to show you this. ain't just... This just ain't one cherry picked verse uh, uh, out of context. This is the theme of the entire Quran. This is the message. Kill them all. <laughs> they won't convert. Kill them. <laughs> Eight and sixty. If you fear treachery from any of your allies, <laughs> if you even think they might double cross you. <laughs> you may fairly retaliate by breaking off your treaty with them. God does not love the treacherous. <laughs> so you can break any treaty and backstab anybody. And all you got to say is, 
I think they might have been getting ready to do that to me. <laughs> Let not the unbelievers think that they will ever get away. They have not the power to do so. Muster against them all the men in Calvary at your command so that you may strike terror into the enemies of God and your enemy. <laughs> Amen. Oh, what a great, what a great religion of peace we got going on right here. Okay. It will be one more. 47 4. <laughs> Forty-seven and four. So all this to say, <laughs> they may say, oh, we want peace, we want peace, but it's a trick. They're told in here, tell the unbeliever whatever you have to tell them to get in a place where you can slay them. That's in here. <laughs> Forty-seven, four. They're allowed to lie in order to kill you. <laughs> Forty-seven. And four. All right. Okay, here we go. When you meet the unbelievers in the battlefield, strike off their heads. Cut their heads off. <laughs> and when you've laid them low, bind your captives firmly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that's your, that, that's your Quran. That's your... That's your great uh, uh, religion of peace. <laughs> Look, they don't want peace with Israel. They don't want peace with anybody. That's against their religion. Not killing you is against their religion. To follow their religion, if you, won't, if you will not convert and submit to them and pay them tribute, their, their religion says to cut off your head. That's Islam. Point blank, period. So <laughs> that, we know who we're dealing with here. They're going to keep coming. They're going to keep coming. And look at that's Iran. That's Libya. That's Ethiopia. That's Turkey. That's all the nations we just read about in Ezekiel chapter 38. And that's who in these terrorist attacks came out of Syria and Lebanon, Hezbollah, Islamic militants, funded by Iran, supported by all the Islamic nations. That's who just came into Israel and attacked and murdered and kidnapped and tortured. And they've been shelling. They've been bombing buildings, dropping buildings. I mean, all, all out attack on the nation of Israel. And now they've just declared full war against them. All right. This, listen, this. This all had to happen. This was all prophesied. This is all, it's all coming down in these last days. These last days before what? Before God's church is taken out of here. What? We were the, we were the wild branch that was grafted into the tree. Huh? But what's, it's time for the, the time of the Gentiles because blindness in part has happened to Israel until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So time of the Gentiles is done. Gentiles have ha had their chance. God's about to call his church out of here. And we're, boom, we're out of here. Then what happens? Then the natural branches, Israel, gets grafted back in. And that's what the time of, of Jacob's trouble, that's what Daniel's 70th week, that's what the tribulation period is about, is the restoration of the nation of Israel before at the end when Christ returns and sets up his kingdom and sits on the throne of David in Jerusalem and rules and reigns the earth through the nation of Israel for a thousand years, just like the book said. Well, oh, somebody's going to say, oh, that was allegorical. That was fulfilled in the church. Blah, 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 blah. That's not, that's your private interpretation. We're going to go exactly and literally by what the book says and just believe the book. Amen. All right. So here, rolling this down. This is how, this is where I was coming to. Uh, like I said, I, I'm going somewhere with this. Look with me in Isaiah chapter 17. Very interesting. The judgments against Syria. Isaiah's judgments against Syria. We're not going to read the whole chapter and stuff. I'm just going to show you two really, 
really key verses. The burden of Damascus, Damascus, the capital of Syria, one of the oldest cities on earth. I mean, Syria and Damascus are Israel's ancient enemies. Damascus has been around for a long, 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 long time. The burden of Damascus, the capital of Syria. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. When did that happen? It never happened. Damascus has always been there. It's always been a city. It wasn't destroyed like Israel was and, and left a ruinous heap in 70 of AD by, by, by Titus of Rome. No, Damascus and Syria, they've always been there. Damascus has always been there. So this is something that still has to happen in the future is that Damascus will be made a ruinous heap, the capital of Syria. And this is interesting. Look at verse 9. In that day shall his strong cities be forsaken by, a forsaken bow, and his utmost branch, which they left, because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. So it says that this making of a ruinous heap shall be because of the children of Israel. So right now, Hezbollah, they're, they're, they're claiming to be just uh, Islamic militias funded by Iran, that they're not part of the Syrian government, but we know the Syrian government loves them. They're, just, they're, all, they're all Islamic, cut your head off, killers together, and they, know, they all want Israel driven into the sea and destroyed. There will never be peace with the nation of Israel, with any Islamic nation. And so they're, they're stationed right there on the Israeli border in Syria, that's where they're shooting their rockets. And Israel's been doing the airstrikes to these Hezbollah camps and, 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 and rocket strikes to these Hezbollah, these militia camps in Syria. This has been going on a long time. But now it's full, now it's full war has been declared. Israel has declared war against these Hezbollah folks. So now if they go in with their armies and, and attack them on Syrian soil and invade Syria, and Syria then uh, formally and officially, not just the militants, but the government of Syria declares war against Israel. And Israel smashes out Damascus <laughs> in a ruinous heap, like the Bible said is going to happen. Could that be the event that sparks and sets off the Ezekiel th chapter 38 battle where Russia and Iran, and Libya, and Turkey, and they all, could that be the spark that sets that off? Is that why Syria's not in that list of nations in Ezekiel chapter 38? I don't know. Could be. Could be. I'm just saying, we live in interesting times, and you want to know where we are in God's prophetic time clock? You keep your eye on the nation of Israel, <laughs> And, and those dirty Mohammedans <laughs> with their head cutting off religion, <laughs> you keep your eye on what's going over, uh, what's going on over there. Amen. And uh, listen, we are not we are not going to be caught in the dark. Praise God, because we have the light of His Word, huh? We 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 know all that's going to happen. So there's never no reason to fear. There's never reason to doubt. He's, co he's coming in power and glory, and he's going to call us out of here. There will be perilous times as we come into the end. <laughs> it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But look, at, we're, not, we're not going through the tribulation. We're not going through the judgment on this earth. Uh, he has promised to come and get his bride, and we will be in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb while all the bad, really bad stuff is going on down here. Praise God. But that just lets you know. How close we are to that trumpet blowing and him coming to get us out of here. Praise God. Be encouraged. We'll see you next time.